We're shaking people, back with another reaction, back with some more John Taylor. And we're actually going to jump back in time about a decade, and we're going to listen to a tune called I Do What I Do, uh, released as a single, I think, in relation to the movie Nine and a Half Weeks. Uh, there's been some comments uh, about, you know, me not having done this to begin with, and so I'm going forward in the deep dive, and like, are you going to go back and do it? I did want to get back to this, so yeah, we'll eventually jump back, uh, continue going through the Neurotic Outsiders. I think there's like one or two tracks remaining. Um, our f on feelings are good and other lies, so lots more John Taylor coming, but I did want to get back and sort of, you know, take care of this so that we can then proceed on forward. Um, and yeah, the title, I Do What I Do, it is uh, technically a tautology, which is something that is self-evident but can still be insightful or like a meaningful statement. Um, you know, like the comment, it's not over till it's over, it's a tautology. You're literally saying that like A equals A, and yet inherent or like implicit within that phrase is the idea that you should keep working right up until the end because you never know what will happen until the result is done, complete, official. So there's sort of like, you know, messages within tautologies despite the fact that they are essentially repeating the same thing twice to like confirm um, the, the same concept. So um, yeah, I do what I do. There, implicitly there's an indication of um, not being concerned with maybe what other people are doing or not feeling the need to justify one's own actions. Um, perhaps indicating what one is good at and the lane in which one operates. So again, just a simple phrase in which you're literally sort of like repeating yourself, um, I do think it suggests a few possible meanings for the tune, which, um, yeah, there's a lot of tautologies like that where um, it is essentially just the same thing twice, and yet if you think about it, there's ultimately a lot of um, possibilities for meaning. So let's find out. This is John Taylor. The tune is I Do What I Do. And it's a 1986 single, again, I think released in relation to the film Nine and a Half Weeks. I do what I do today. I'm wondering if it'll have kind of a power station feel. We're not far away from that, right? We're like not far after that. I do what I do today. I heard you, man. I heard you back there. Do you live the way? You want to almost a little like Bossa Nova vibes. Do you feel the way? You want to see? Cheap 
code, but this may be my favorite from him so far. Like, Definitely 80s vibes compared to the other stuff, but this is brilliant. I love it. Quick fade. Um, yeah, really cool tune. Um, I noticed, because I looked this up, because I didn't know, like, what the context was, and that's, you know, I'm sure a number of you already commented, but, you know, I'm going through a lot of music, and, you know, not just John Taylor, but all sorts of other things, so it's hard to keep everything in mind, um, uh, but I just wanted to make sure I knew what it was from. I did notice on the single release, as it's listed, you know, there's many different versions, but as the, the one that the master release on Discogs, shows that there's a jazz instrumental on the other side, so I assume that's just the same track, but like without the vocals. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. If it is different, if it is like a fundamentally different tune, just, you know, sort of maybe a different um, actual track, but similar flavor, um, I wouldn't mind listening to it. You know, perhaps even the jazz instrumental. Uh, again, I'm a big fan of the saxophone, and obviously that one made a big impression on me. But yeah, when I saw that, I am curious like what the other version uh, might be like. Nevertheless, uh, really cool tune, definitely different vibes from his 90s stuff, which has more of like an alt-rock kind of 90s rock feel. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed the female voice, that was a cool addition, uh, do shout it out if you know who that is. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed the kind of synth-pop flavor, uh, and ultimately the, the composition of the track. I enjoyed the sort of like the sequencing or the progression of the, the parts of that track. And, you know, again, it's, it's basically a cheat code. If you want me to really like a tune, write a good sax part for it, and I'm instantly on board. Uh, and so, yeah, that one, maybe because by virtue of the presence of the sax, which, you know, it wasn't just the sax was there. It was like a really good um, couple moments, and in that like, one sort of solo moment in particular. Um, but, yeah, because of that, it may push into my favorite so far. Although, again, it's like almost comparing apples and oranges uh, just because the, the flavor, the style is so different. Uh, from his stuff on Feelings Are Good and Other Lies, as well as the handful of uh, neurotic outsider tunes I've gone through, which I realize that's kind of a different thing because there's you know people coming in who have other sort of like heavier rock backgrounds. Nevertheless, uh, that was really cool. Uh, looking forward to going through more of his stuff. Uh, do let me know what you think of this one. I will see you next time. Peace.